When building any LibGDX application, managing memory is most priority. I will have a link in the description towards this article if you guys want to check it out. Most classes that are provided by LibGDX use native resource. This means that you have to manually dispose of your resource as you can see here. And if we scroll down, there is a full list. And one common thing about these native resource, they all implement the disposable interface, which if we click on it, we can see it will bring us to the Java docs and it has a method called dispose, which releases all resources from this object. Whenever you are done using, you have to call dispose to free up system memory. Useful tools for memory management are object pooling. And then we have profiling memory leaks to software that you guys can download is is Visual VM and J profile. I will have a link in the description if you guys want to check it out. Now let's define how a pool works. Imagine we had a box which we will define our pool like this. Then we decide to render a green ball. Now what if the ball is not being in view of the player? We don't technically need to render it so we can put it back into our pool. What if the ball becomes in view of the player? Instead of us creating a new object, we can just grab from the pool. Now essentially we just grab the exact same object to render it. Now to create a new ball, we can have the pool to create a new ball for us just like this. Now we have two balls that we can be able to use to render and can go back into the pool whenever we don't need them. If we head back into IntelliJ, I have an example on how we can use pooled objects. One, we define a pool which has the generic of red ball and then we define a abstract constructor which overrides a new object. This method is used use when you're trying to obtain a new object from the pool. The second way of defining a pool is when we do pools.get and then the object that we want to create. We got to make sure that the object that we are going to create is a no argument constructor, meaning that if we double click on this, this constructor cannot have arguments. If we take a look at the pool object, we can see that the first constructor has a capability of 16. We can also set our own capabilities and also set the max size of the pool. Heading over to our object, we got to make sure that the object implements pool.poolable, which is an interface that implements reset so we can be able to reset our object in order for us to use it. We check if the object is alive, then we update, else we reset the object and then we remove it from the rendered list. Lastly, we free it back to the pool on which we can use it again. Now if we run our example, we can see if we click, the object goes to the side and then it disappears and then up here we have free objects, again the pool just created this object, and if we click it again, rendered objects uses the objects from the pool goes back into the pool so we can be able to use it again now if we want to create more objects one two then we have two objects goes back into the pool we can take out one but there's still one in the pool this right here you can use this to render a whole bunch of objects and then you can put it back into the pool without creating too much objects and having the memory overload be an issue all right everyone that wraps up everything in today's video i hope you learned something new about memory management with object pools i will have a video on screen if you guys want to check out the new libgdx liftoff tool and also leave a comment on how this affected your program and how this made rendering objects more efficient all right have a good one